Voilà, là, 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 Good Good morning and welcome to today's Tax Muchuzi. It's been a while since we've been together and uh, I know that we missed last week. Apologies. But today we are going to have such an exciting show and we have a very interesting guest who's going to take us into the automation processes of deemed divert and VAT uh, exemptions. And uh, thank you for joining. Apologies for the delay and hopefully we'll get into the show and uh, looking forward to answering your questions and having to be able to share with you and you also share with us the challenges you've got in VAT, especially for business owners. And uh, thank you for joining us, Irene, and I hope that you can introduce yourself. Yes. Good morning. This is Irene Nachinji Kayebe, coming from the Business Policy D Division okay. of Domestic Taxes. I'm currently working in the DIMVAT unit and I'm here to sensitize you on the new automation process which has come on board. Yes, ah, thank you. thank you, Irene, for that. Now, you've said that uh, you're here to sensitize our audience and the taxpayers about the automation process. Yes. Does it mean that there has been something before this automation has been happening? It means that it has been manual and now you're moving into automation. How is that going? Yes, um, the process was currently a manual process where the taxpayers had to apply to Commissioner Domestic Taxes yes. and the applications are handled by the DIMVAT unit. Mm -hmm. after, the, after the processing, suppliers are given letters authorizing them to supply under the provision okay. and then the suppliers have to again up, uh, send an email to steal the same unit to configure the particular items yeah. to enable invoicing on that provision and finally also enable return filing. Ah, okay. So when you keep, when you say suppliers, do you mean taxpayers or anyone who has a business and is legible to remit VAT? Idea of the process is that uh, these beneficiaries who are the licensees, okay who are government ministries, departments, and agencies, mm -hmm. who are contractors executing aid-funded projects, mm -hmm. they determine and declare to us that I am going to get my supplies from Hima Cement, I'm going to get my supplies from Seroma, and these items, I'm going to use them on the aid-funded project. Mm -hmm. So when they declare to us, after we will send a, a letter, a letter is written mm -hmm. and uh, issued to Hima Cement and Seroma, notifying them that they can supply under the provision for those items. Yes. Oh, okay, that's quite clear. And uh, yes, so how long has this automation process been ongoing? Or oh, is it closed? Is it still going on? And a taxpayer may be wondering, what is in it for them? Um, ideally, starting October 1st, yes. we are going to have uh, the taxpayers will be required to apply mm -hmm. via their IFRIS account. Okay. They're supposed to apply via the IFRIS account and uh, be able to, upon approval, they, they can go to any supplier. Mm -hmm. That is a big change. Okay. We had a challenge that taxpayers would have a problem of us notifying to one supplier all the quantity. Mm -hmm. And when they actually need it, the suppliers may be the stock is out, yes. they're out of stock. Okay. So we are bringing in a new change that here the, they can go to any supplier, mm -hmm. but the quantity has been controlled mm -hmm. as per the scope of their projects. Ah, that's quite interesting. So for you say starting 1st October of 2023, right? Yes, please. We are, the taxpayers are required to apply to be automated. Is that what you're saying? Ideally, we already have an existing list okay. of those that have those ongoing projects. Okay. 
Okay. Those will be automatically activated. Their projects are going to be automatically activated. Yes. And starting 1st October, mm -hmm. in their windows, they will, in their IFRIS accounts, yes. they will be given that web form where they can apply for their quantities. Ah, that's great. Uh, very interesting. So it is only for those who have IFRIS accounts. What about those who do not have IFRIS accounts? Or does it mean that everyone must have an IFRIS account? They all have to have IFRIS accounts. They have to have. Yes. Okay. However, in the interim, mm -hmm. we are looking into helping those that don't have. Okay. But uh, ideally, from first, all of them ought to have mm -hmm. this account. Ah. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. So, Irene, what is what are the requirements for a taxpayer to join this automation process? Or isn't there anything they just have to apply and that's it? What are the requirements? For the ongoing projects... Yes. Um, the projects are already are going to be activated effective first October. Okay. However, in the interim, they are supposed to provide us with interim payment certificates and yes. progress reports okay. for us to gauge at what level their projects have reached so that the activation is effected based on their progress reports. However, when a new taxpayer comes on board, okay. they are required to get a ruling. Mm -hmm. which will still be a manual process mm -hmm. that they apply to us and declare to us that uh, we have this project running, we have been contracted by the ministry, we have gotten a license for mining, op for mining operations, mm -hmm. and then at that point we activate them on the system. Then for their subsequent applications, for their purchases that qualify for the provision, they will apply through their IFRS accounts. Oh, okay. That's uh, very interesting, and it's also good to know. So, how easy is it to? How is are you making the work of the taxpayers easy, or you're making the work of your easy? Who is having it the easy way in this? Both ends are getting a win in this. Okay. For the taxpayers, we are removing. Um, they have been ha there has been a challenge of uh, late notification. Mm -hmm. Even the tracking of applications in the manual process is hard. Okay. And even um, the configuration, when a person is given, a, when the supplier is given a letter, mm -hmm. the item is not configured there and then. So we want to make it linked that as when, as when an approval is made mm -hmm. in the IFRS account by the URA staff, mm -hmm. then they can go anywhere and the activation has been done automatically. Yes. Okay, so that is for the taxpayer. Yes. On the side of URA. For URA, we'll be able to track all the approvals. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to have that control because there hasn't been a link mm -hmm. with the application and the IFRIS configuration. Okay. Yes. So you're moving away from the manual process to the automated process. Does it mean that there will be no need of someone coming to the offices physically? They'll just have to get online and do it? Yes, ideally, just like how I will just re-echo, mm. that it's only for the ruling part. Mm. What I mean by ruling is that you declare to us that we have gotten a contract yes. with Ministry of maybe Education, mm -hmm. yes, yes, to build a certain school, and it is funded by World Bank. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you, when you declare that, mm -hmm. you, it is brought on board. We vet the documents, mm -hmm. we engage Ministry of Education, and at the end of the process, you're configured on the system. Okay. At that point, whatever, whatever supply you're going to make on this project, mm -hmm. and it is sole and exclusive for the project, mm -hmm. you have to apply in your IFRIS account. Okay. Upon processing by URA, mm -hmm. you can go to any supplier mm -hmm. for these purchases. Ah, okay. So like you said, there's somewhere where you indicated that this is a big change. They are going to be able to go to any other supplier as long as they have been approved or configured. Yes. Yeah, so what was there formally? What was the issue? What was how was it being done? Formally, the scenario was that if we give you a letter for Hima cement, yes. a hundred bucks. Okay. You have to buy all the 100 bags from him as they meant. But what we are bringing on board is that we are going to approve 100 bags mm -hmm. and you can go to anyone without okay. coming for notification from us. Ah. Yes. Ah, that's, uh, that's very good. I think it's good news to the taxpayers who have been struggling with the different supplies and, you know, also putting on mm. pressure the providers who are yes. supposed to actually give them these things. The big, the big challenge came in that if we strictly give you a letter mm. for a certain supplier, yes. you had to 
complete your whole procurement with that tax that regardless tax of payer. whether the they supplier out of stock talk, or they don't have delays. that specific quantity yes. yeah so did it used to affect the VAT collections or it wasn't affecting the VAT collections mm -hmm. however it was affecting the taxpayers to be able to procure in time okay for their purchases and it was affecting the project's duration okay yes ah okay so I just needed to know if someone is asking, what are the obligations of the taxpayer in this? Obligations of the taxpayers, I'm going to specify each category. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the licensees. Okay. Normally, they, they are supposed to um, avail their licenses they've gotten from Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, yes. as well as the contracts and call-off orders that they have issued out to different suppliers. Yes. Yes. And for every procurement, when they are going to the suppliers, they're supposed to specify to the supplier under which license, under which project mm -hmm. they are purchasing this item. Mm -hmm. When it comes to government ministries, departments and agencies, they are required to give us a full list of all the contracts they have signed on the different projects. Okay. And when they are also purchasing, especially when it comes to ministries, it is the project management related supplies like um, workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, conference workshops. Okay. We have vehicle repairing. They are supposed to explain to the supplier that this is under a particular project. If I can specify Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health, when they are, up, when they are going to procure vehicle repair from uh, maybe CIFAO. Yes. They are required to explain to CIFAO that I'm getting this under arm chip, I'm getting this under COVID emergency, mm -hmm. I'm getting this under this USAID funded project. They have to specify to the supplier because the approvals are going to be done on a project basis okay. in the system. Okay, so when we were having this conversation earlier, you mentioned that uh, Whereas the manual process is being shifted and transitioned into the digital and automation, there are some parts of the manual process that are going to be retained. Which ones are those? Ideally, from the process, as I've explained, that the ruling, what I call uh, the confirmation that your project qualifies for deemed VAT, mm -hmm. is still a manual process. That the taxpayer at the beginning, they are required to give us the contract documents which are containing um, the bills of quantities, which is containing the commencement debt, commencement of work certificate, which is containing any technical drawings or any adjustments to this project at the beginning. Upon reviewing, then the project is activated on the system. Going from that point, they will have the process is online. Okay. Processes online in their IFRIS account. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. I was just looking to see if there are some questions that we could answer from our taxpayers. I encourage our viewers to ask questions. Just put them in the chat and I'll be able to read them out and Irene will help us answer them. Mm -hmm. So, Irene, as we continue with this conversation of deemed VAT, someone may be wondering, are there any exemptions to this? Exemptions. Are there VAT exemptions? That yes. Mm. Ideally, if you come to the law provision, it does say that the items, the supplies have to be sole and exclusive to the project. So for those that are not sole and exclusive to the project, the taxpayers are supposed to expect rejections for that, as well as remarks as why this has happened. Taxpayers should also expect in this online process that if any information is not provided, where the system will enable us to return the application to you mm. and complete the application, and then it is received back mm. upon submission by the taxpayer. The taxpayers are going to also expect notification of emails yes. upon project activation, mm. upon submission of an application, mm. and upon processing by URA. Okay. In all these positions, the taxpayer will get a notification.
Okay. Yes. So there's this issue that usually comes up among the public, especially on online spaces. People are always complaining that when it comes to URA, we are always giving them system generated messages and there are so many like they just keep coming and coming and coming even if someone has cleared their VAT and they have nothing to worry about like they just keep getting these messages how is this system different and how is it going to handle that issue as i've explained this one is yes. intentional okay. it is only when those three mm. activities are done in the system okay one at project activation okay Two, when he has applied hmm. immediately, at instant, he's getting, he gets a notification that your application has been received by URA and has been sent for further processing. Okay. And when the, act, the application is processed by URA, mm -hmm. they'll get a notification which clearly states what has been approved, what has been purchased, and the remarks of why maybe something has been rejected mm -hmm. or reduced as per... Yeah, okay, so that means lesser messages, but at they are very required and necessary, not yeah. the usual system auto-generated. Yeah. So in line with that, you mentioned that URA will be, of course, giving these different notifications, yeah, and approvals. So at what point do these approvals come? What's the timeline? Is there a timeline that you're going to be working in or it's just going to be as and when, case by case? Um, it's going What's to be timeline? case by case, depending, because there are some taxpayers who prefer to apply all of the materials for a full project that is going to run for four years. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that will take a lot of time. Okay. So I advise uh, the taxpayers who are especially the beneficiaries I've talked about, the government ministries, departments and agencies, yes. the licensees, as well as the contractors who are executing aid funded projects, mm. you'll be required to at least apply for what a uh, best thing on your work plan, mm. what you're going to use in the next one month, okay. what you're going to use in the next three months. Yes. And there we we oblige and commit mm. that we will process these within five to ten working days, depending. Okay. Mm. So we're going to dive into people's messages and questions. Yeah, there are a couple of number of them. So the first one, Diana says, Irene has explained the process for taxpayers using products or goods. What about for those in the service-oriented business? Um, yes, um, I beg apologies. Mm. However, it is for both the goods mm. and the services because yes. both goods and services are purchased and procured under these projects. Um, okay, yes, that makes sense. Hel uh, Jamie Vasa Vasavada says, Hello, you are here. This is indeed a very well, a very well initiative to get deemed VAT digitalized. How long will it take to approve after taxpayer applies online? This is something I asked. Maybe you can just recap a little bit. Yes, uh, five to ten working days, depending. Mm -hmm. It's just one item, we will not spend a lot of time on it. Okay, but if it is a full application of let me say a hundred items mm. they should also in, expect the workman the work hours in that yes okay uh isaac lukuya says hi how is the supplier to the deemed taxpayer affected by these changes okay mm. implications of this automated process is that suppliers will not be receiving letters effective first october Okay. However, mm. when at your window you do not find the deemed option, mm -hmm. that means your customer has not yet finalized with us. Yeah. So your feedback to them would be mm. that they should advise their customers mm. to ensure that they have, their approvals are done before mm -hmm. they come. Okay. Then secondly, Suppliers will be obliged to give the IFRIS commodity codes to these customers upon giving them these LPOs, upon giving quotations, upon getting LPOs. Mm. They should advise the taxpayers mm. about, they should avail the IFRIS commodity code to these taxpayers. Okay. Why is this so? Is that as the taxpayer is applying, the mm. beneficiaries, they are required to indicate the code. Okay. The IFRIS commodity code I'm talking about is that you need Unify, unique identifier in the system of IFRIS for mm. each and every supply and good. Okay. That cement has a particular code. Yes. That um, drilling has a particular code. Okay. So we expect, and it's an eight-digit figure, okay. normally represented in IFRIS in brackets. 
Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you, Irene. Chris Ojara says, is this applicable to new projects or even ongoing? Sorry, I joined in late. I think you can just recap a bit because okay. I know you answered this. Yes. yes. For the new projects, mm. you will be required to give us the, the whole contract document. Yes. And upon vetting, then the project will be activated on the IFRIS mm. system. For ongoing ones, the configuration is going to be set as per 1st October. So expect an email from us on the 1st of October telling you that this particular project has been activated. You can go ahead to apply for your procurement. Ah, okay. Uh, Anonymous attendee has a couple of questions. So I think we shall just go one by one, yeah? The first question is, uh, kindly demonstrate a test run on screen to guide us through the changes. Can you do that now? Oh, okay, that's fine. Definitely, we'll get back to the taxpayers, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the second question is advice on what happens when materials change due to project scope modifications. Okay. Yes. Now uh, that has been catered for, the amendment will be done mm. from our side okay. if there has been a change in. The change in materials is majorly in two ends. Either it has been increased or the specifications have been changed. Mm. Okay. So that will be done from the URA side. Okay. Uh, through an application, they will notify us that this has been changed, but mm -hmm. use the same system mm -hmm. to apply. Okay. Uh, the third question is, advice on the current manual project still pending. Can you just recap quickly? I know you answered this too. For the manual processes, the, 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 what I'm calling the online, the ongoing projects, yes. and those ones will be configured from okay. our side. Okay. What may be what I can echo back is mm. that uh, for those applications, those letters that we issue to the taxpayers, mm -hmm. effective 1st October, yes. they will have to notify us what they have consumed on those letters, mm -hmm. and then we'll activate for them the balance within the system. Ah, yes. Okay, makes sense. Uh, the fourth question is, please advise on varying IFRIS codes for the same materials. For example, Serema has a different IFRIS code for cement, and Hima also has different IFRIS codes. You mentioned that different materials have their own codes, right? Yes. So um, why the disparity? ideally in the IFRI in the IFRI system, yes. all like cement has only one IFRI code. What I think, uh, what I want to echo out that there is the product code okay. that has been set by the different suppliers, but mm -hmm. there is an IFRI commodity code which is unique and it has to be used by all taxpayers. So the IFRIS commodity, commodity code, code I'm is referring one. to is the one of URA. Ah, uh, is the one of URA. URA. So is it a must for the suppliers to use that particular commodity? Yes, they are code. currently using that particular commodity code. What they differ is that internally for them in their system, yes. the suppliers have a different uh, commodity code product code. So that is where the difference is product codes internally in the supplier system, not yes. URA side. Yes. So is it okay to still use these codes or it will cause an issue? Is it an issue or it's no, okay? No, it is not an issue. What I want to echo out, the code I'm referring to is the URA if it's commodity code, okay. which normally is represented in brackets and eight digit figure. If I can specify for cement, yes. it is 30, it is 30, 16. Mm -hmm. like that, yes. Okay, so the product code of the suppliers doesn't matter as long as they have the URA product code. Which, code. That is how they configured their stock. Ah, okay. It is already set. I hope yeah. we've answered that question successfully. Yes. However, maybe what uh, uh, the taxpayer is needs it? to know. Yes, taxpayers should know that uh, we are going to post videos of these demos uh -huh. that they can review we for self testing. Yes. So let them not be worried about not getting a demo today mm. but trainings are going on for the different taxpayers but if you miss that training we are placing videos on on youtube okay. as well as the ifris page okay. for them to acquaint themselves with the process okay so you indicated that trainings are ongoing so is it you are going on ground and training the suppliers they will be invited here ah, they will be invited here. yes some have been Invited. Some already. of them have been online. Okay. The online ones, I think, are complete. Okay. But the demos will help. 
Okay. And they are so hosted. So, at Expire, should look out for the invitations to come to you and be trained. Yes. Okay. If they don't get it, we are going to send the links for the different trainings, mm. for the different demos that will be videos that they can use at any one time. Okay. To so. Ah, so we can just uh, try and answer. There are quite a number of questions, so we're going to go through them quickly so that everyone gets the question answered, yeah? So, uh, Mill says, do the supplier need, does the supplier need to get dimmed later as usual as he was getting before to supply material? No. Okay. Suppliers won't be expecting letters. Okay. But they they will under, they will see from their end mm. that that person hasn't gotten approval from URA. Ah. Yes, if they don't see that deemed that option on the supplier's end, okay. they will they, it will be like an indicator to them that their customer mm. hasn't yet finalized with URA. Ah. Yes. So it will all be an open ended kind of approval for both the URA and the taxpayer. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. So Diana says, what will be the turnaround time for the approvals online? Because you know how your process takes so long for an approval to be received. I think you mentioned this. You said it's going to be five to ten working days, yeah? Yes. But that will not be for every case. No. It will be for those that have maybe They're a couple in... of items. Yes. But as long as it is one item, you'll be able to even Persistent. get approval even in one day, yeah? Yes. Okay, Alan Kato says, to whom does this dim divert apply? Is it to all industries or mining and petroleum industries? Um, dim divert applies to government ministries, departments and agencies who are executing aid funded projects. Okay. It applies to contractors who are executing aid funded projects mm -hmm. as well as licensees. Okay. Who, those are persons who are undertaking petroleum mm -hmm. or mining operations, okay. as well as the taxpayers who are supplying on the ECOP, uh -huh. on the ECOP, project. yes, okay. the East African Crude Oil Project. Okay. Yes. Ah, I think that is quite a, a good answer to the question. So Global Chemical says, if I am supplying goods to a customer on a dim divert arrangement, how do I issue them an invoice without VAT? Or do I do a VAT inclusive invoice and it's them to file for DIM divert? Yes. Mm. Uh, for that, as I've explained, you have to issue a DIM divert invoice. If okay. you don't issue it, mm. then you cannot file. Oh. You cannot file that. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, the new web form that is coming up, mm -hmm. your pop it will always populate your DIM divert cell. Okay. So we advise and urge suppliers mm -hmm. to always ask these taxpayers whether they're on the deemed VAT, if this supply is for a deemed VAT project mm -hmm. or it is for another project that doesn't qualify for the provision. Ah, thank you. So Lafour Joel says, dear panelists, my question is, we made invoices for one of our clients and paid for this VAT. This was on credit. Later on, these ask us to make credit notes and give us a letter from URA, which wasn't talked about during the time they gave us the LPO. Now these items aren't configured and it's holding payment. Can you explain a bit on this? Yes, mm -hmm. we are strongly engaging and hand holding these beneficiaries that so they should be serious at this point of procurement. Mm -hmm. Let them notify their suppliers that this is on a DIMVAT project, this is not, and this will help to remove that. But that current problem you're having, yes. the, the credit note approvals are being handled. Okay. As long as you attach that letter that was received from URA in regards to approving, those supplies under the provision. Well, Joel is saying that at the beginning of the procurement, yes, yes, they were not told anything to do with credit notes and they didn't have a letter from URA. So someone comes back and says, you know what, I have this letter, so I need a credit note, which is making, holding his payment. Holding How his can, payment on which He side? says, he says uh, the, my question is, the goods were on credit, yes. Later on, they asked him to make credit notes and he, he was given a letter from URA, which wasn't talked about during the time they gave them the, the during the time they received the LPO. Now these items aren't configured and it's holding payment. If he has a letter, let him uh, respond to us, let him uh, notify us about that, and mm -hmm. then we will 
we can make the configuration made mm -hmm. and he can issue his invoice. Ah. Yes. So he has to reach out to you via email? email? Yes. Okay. And then you configure the items and his payment can be made? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, such as say, sorry, I came in late. How do we access and apply for this online process? Mm -hmm. I think you talked about that, but you can still just echo it just for those who came in a bit late. Okay. For ongoing projects, uh, effective 1st October, yes. you just have to enter into your IPRIS account okay. and go to the DIMVAT web form okay. and apply for your procurements that qualify for deemed VAT or VAT exemption. However, when it comes to new projects, the first process is that you have to bring the physical documents of your contracts okay. to be vetted. And then after they are vetted, your project is added onto the IFRS account. Okay, thank you. Kobugabe Harriet says, hello, we have a deemed VAT project. We fill deemed cells, but what happens to purchase? To the purchase? For the purchase? Yes. For what I can echo out is that for your sale to any beneficiary, mm. it is handled by the beneficiary, is the one to apply. Okay. But for your purchases, you are the one who is supposed to apply. If I can give a line of that uh, Ministry of Health has contracted maybe CIFAO to do some work, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. Or maybe let me say it has contracted Ambitious okay. to build a school. Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Then Ambitious wants to buy cement. Okay. Now, when Ambitious reaches a point to invoice Ministry of Health, yes. Ministry of Health must have applied for that sale. For that procurement. Okay. So that at the point ambitious issues and mm -hmm. invoice, it is already activated. Then when ambitious needs to buy cement, he's the one supposed to apply. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope we've answered you, Harriet. Uh, Michael Nuagawa says, for aid funded projects, is deemed VAT limited to contractors of ministries, departments, and agencies of government only? Yes. Okay. I think that answers you. Alice says, thank you for the presentation. I would like a clarification on how one can go about this. Let's say you have a contract with a government body that is authorized to collect tax and you have to invoice. Will this help too? I need a couple of questions. She says, let's say you have a contract with a government body yeah, mm. that is authorized to collect tax and you have to invoice. Will this help as well? And they're authorized to collect tax. Okay, let's say I think they mean where it is standard rated. Uh, I'm not so sure, but uh, let's say because they're saying with a government body that is authorized to collect, I think that's URA here. Mm -hmm. Let's now put it in the context of it is URA. Let's say a contract has, let's say you have a contract with URA and you have to invoice. Will this help as well for suppliers who have contracts with URA? Suppliers, I, I don't, uh, I want to echo out that, let them not um, confuse this with government, business to government, mm. cash basis accounting. Okay. The cash basis accounting, a person is not supposed to apply. Okay. The, the, the government agency departments have been already configured and others, the configuration is ongoing. Okay. However, the, the test, or let me say, the assumption all the, the qualification is that the condition is hmm. that ministry must be executing an aid funded project. Ah. If they are not, hmm. it won't work. That was the same with the mining industry and petroleum. Okay. The licensee or the, the licensee of mining or petroleum hmm. must have gotten a license from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. Okay. So that is the person who supplies or whose purchases qualify for deemed. Yeah. But it is to an extent that the items are sold and exclusive for that project. Okay. Kajobe Stella says, how will suppliers to the deemed VAT customers know that the quantity has been fully utilized? The deemed VAT customer can keep moving with the same letter to different suppliers. We have provided for a VAT purchase report on the side of the purchase on the customer side mm -hmm. where they can also vet on their do that self check oh. on the side to know that the quantity has been depleted so that report can be got from the automation or from online 
from yes. the online platform? The taxpayer, especially the customers, yes. will have that window okay. for seeing their purchases they have done on the facility. Ah, that mm. makes sense. Apple Raymond says, why do some deemed applications take long? Why do some take long? Yes. It depends on uh, the documents not being sufficient and also in the scenario where the documents are not clear mm. or the purchase is not clear. The mm. procurement documents that have been submitted are not clear. Mm. However, the system has given us that window mm. that the application can be returned back to okay. the taxpayer mm -hmm. to amend what they have submitted mm. or to add something to the application okay. so that it's complete. Ah, I think that will help. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ronald Simui says, thanks for the explanation. However, five to ten days for a system is too long. Is there in future, is there a possibility in future to bring this down? This is because sometimes we get breakdowns which need immediate supply. We can, you can contact us and we can prioritize whenever that emergency Comes occurs. Up. But at least they ought to apply. Okay. The line. So I don't think it's necessarily the exact five to ten days. It's not exactly. But right. that is like an estimation you give to someone. Yes, and but it can, be, it less, can be, less. be less than five days. Yes, it can yes. be less than the five days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anonymous attendee, attendee says, guide on the control of taxpayers of multiple deemed or exempt projects. Um, every project... As I explained, approvals are on my project basis, mm. and also every every taxpayer will need to apply on the specific project okay. that they are dealing with. Mm. So at the end of the day, even invoicing mm. from the from the application to the processing to the invoicing, it is all done per project. So that is where the control is. Okay. Apollo Raymond says, when the automation is done, will the applicant be required to come to URA? No. No. Well, everything will be done from their IFIS account. Yes, please. Okay. Mahesh says, uh, what, what documents are required for export items to be procured and then to be sold as part of the product? Uh, this question export. is a bit unclear. But uh, Mahesh, if you, don't, if you don't mind, could you please re-ask the question in, uh, rephrase the question in a way that we can understand so that we're able to answer you? Because this is a bit unclear. Yes. Uh, anonymous attendee again says, how would we treat project disbursements to fund project activities like vehicle hire services, printing services, consultancy services, among others? Ideally, project activities that are diverse for the supplier deeming. As long as it has been provided for okay. in their projects. Okay. Most of them, even those of countries, clearly state Mm. those items mm. and the activities okay. that will require that kind of that will require that kind of purchase ah. so as long as it is in your scope mm. and it is within the value of your project i think there's no problem they should just apply mm -hmm. online okay yes so there is no issue as long as everything as is long as it well yes and they apply correctly mm. it's okay because our biggest test is on the sole and exclusive Ah. use on the project okay so as long as your your books are right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. the bills of quantities have provided for them or your contract has provided for that particular expense mm -hmm. our work is just to facilitate the trade ah. there okay mm -hmm. makes sense uh vika says how long will it take for you to approve <laughs> uh, we are laughing because we've answered this multiple times yes, but i yes. think like we said earlier it depends it on depends your on... application. Yes. Yes. If you if it's an emergency case, place only the emergency item you need that minute, that day, day. that by tomorrow. Mm. But if you bring a full application of uh, fifty items and you expect it that day, mm. maybe a challenge. Yeah, but it but will still be worked on. It will be worked Regardless, on. it will be worked on, and yes. you'll be able to trade. Okay, anonymous attendee, where? Do we get the recap of the conversation as I've joined late? Yes, this is being streamed on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Now, after the show, even if you've joined in like right now or 10 minutes ago, you can always visit YouTube. You'll be able to find this recording and everything, all the explanations you need, yeah? 
Okay. Maybe um, another thing, um, you can also go to URA a blog. Yes. We have already posted about uh, deemed VAT. They can get to understand the provisions, what qualifies, yes. as well as the automation. Yeah, yeah but for this specific video, yeah. they'll find it on YouTube anytime, yes. any day, or even Facebook or Twitter. It will always be there. We don't remove them. Uh, Apollo again says, what do I need to do when I face challenges with a new system? They can contact us. Yes. They can contact contact center. They are mm -hmm. very, very equipped mm -hmm. about the system. They have been trained. They yes. know how to answer your challenges. And then they'll be escalated to the specific respect. Responsible persons will be notified mm -hmm. where the challenge is. Ah. Okay. So you shouldn't worry. They Definitely. shouldn't worry. They can use CRM. They can use the URA touch point. Yes. And we'll get back to them as fast as possible. Okay, thank you. Ali says, how do I confirm with URA that a particular customer is deemed? This may be necessary during contractual agreements with clients. Okay, we can we can provide that. Okay. We will we'll have where to... Can it, will it also be an option online or they will have to contact URA? Uh, for now, they can contact URA. Mm. The, the process of having it in a, maybe on the web portal yes. has not yet been finalized. Has not yet been finalized. Okay. Yes. Ajay says, we are integrated with our ERP and your portal for IFRIS, but we find difficulty in getting integrated IFRIS invoice. We have to make it manually by going on the URA portal. How can this be sorted out? For now, I can. That question is not really. I can uh, in this in this uh, webinar. I cannot conclude on that. Yes. However, I request that this person uh, goes on to URA touch point and states his challenge, hmm. and it will be sent to the responsible parties. Yes, Ajay, yes. this question will be answered, and uh, I'm sure you'll get a satisfactory explanation. You just have to reach out to us again via the touch point, and you will get sorted thank you uh mil says thank you so much okay yeah she was responding to the question she had asked uh, maybe in addition to that they can go to ifris team which is yeah. seated at boulevard uh, boulevard yes boulevard the uh, integrator okay binta says are all these points going to be summaries and shared to emails or be accessed somewhere for referral and better understanding like we said earlier this video is always going to be on youtube you can always go back and look through it and listen and hear and be able to get all the information you need but also irene hinted that there's going to be demo videos yeah yeah and they'll be helpful anytime you need them you can always check them out on the web portal as well as tax snippets are yes. going to go out tax snippets will also be out on our social medias so i'm sure this has been really simplified you can mm -hmm. always get the information either on the web portal or on our social media handles on ura facebook and twitter yeah uh a class Kawalia says, so the taxpayer has to submit your IFRIS commodity or service code when applying. Yes, please. I think we talked about this, the URA code, commodity code, and then for the supplier, which one should they submit when applying? They are supposed to submit the URA IFRIS commodity code okay. uh, for testing, okay. for them to qualify that, to confirm that that is the code. Mm -hmm. It is normally an eight-digit figure mm -hmm. in brackets. And there is also an Excel for goods and services already on the IFRIS uh, portal yes. where they can access and see the different codes ah. for farming. Yes. Okay. So when they're applying, they have to use the URA IFRIS commodity code? Codes. Okay. That makes sense. Maurice says, dear panelists, when will the new web-based return form, particularly for VAT, be rolled out? Not in position to... Uh, Maurice, we will get back to you. You can always reach us to, to reach out to us via our Twitter DM. We have a very capable contact center that will respond to your question immediately. Thank you so much for your question and be assured it's going to be answered. Uh, HP says, dear presenter, can anyone request for the deemed letter on the IFRIS portal or are your agent has to apply for it? Can anyone? Yes. Request for the deemed letter on the IFRIS portal. Or does it have to be their agent who is helping them with their tax affairs to apply for it? Um, I will echo that the person who is who has those rights to apply yes. will have them within their IFRIS account. So if your tax agent is the one who handles, handles your IFRIS account, you'll mm. be the one to apply. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I hope HP that helps you. Yeah. Joseph says some government agencies simply say, Joseph, your question is very, very incomplete. Please complete that question. Because it just says some government agencies simply say and that's it. Uh, William, good morning team. In case of EU funded projects and you are offered a tax exempt letter, is there taxes which are which an implementer is supposed to pay? Are there taxes that someone pays even after they have a letter of exemption from, let's say, aided, an aid aided funded. project? Yes, aid funded project. The aid funded projects is strictly, the scope is only deemed VAT on VAT. Ah. So if there's excise duty on that item, you have to, you have pay. to pay. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you earn income during the year, in the with it during the financial year, yes. you ought to pay yes. income tax. So eight funded projects was only capped onto VAT, the mm. VAT tax head. Yes. So it's majorly VAT, but the other taxes, please ensure yes. that you pay them. Maybe Thank to you. um add on other beneficiaries I didn't talk about is the strategic investors, oh, okay. those who get VAT exemption for their purchases as they are putting up factories, mm -hmm. as they're putting up a uh, hotel. Yes. They will still also use it, but it's strictly on VAT. On only. VAT only. Yes. Thank you so much for that clarification. Ali says, briefly let us know about the 800 projects. Are they listed anywhere for reference? 800 projects. 800 projects. Hey, I think they meant aid, but they wrote yes. 800. Yes. Okay. That, uh, that we can avail the list yes. and people are aware mm. of the taxpayers. Okay. However, this list shouldn't give you that comfort hmm. they should have gotten their purchases approved back end okay yes. uh joseph says some government agencies are clueless that it's their responsibility to apply for deemed VAT. they simply tell a supplier that they don't have they don't pay vat and that vat must not even be included in the quotation and invoice how will ura help this kind of situation we are sensitizing them we did start hand-holding them from March, mm -hmm. and from then they have started applying as well. Okay. But we have not had all of them on board, yes. and that is the gap we are working on. Okay. For any that you're having a challenge with, you can engage us, and we engage the contact person we have from the ministries okay. to enable that you are helped and facilitated. Yeah, but it's currently an ongoing process to make sure that all the government agencies apply mm -hmm. for this so that yes. they do not uh, also... Inconvenience that taxpayer. Yes, they inconvenience the suppliers. Ah, the suppliers. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anonymous says, please, please guide on retrospective application for deemed letters which come much later due to URA approval delays. Ideally, the approval is based on quantity. Mm -hmm. So, if at all you have not passed the quantity that has been approved, yes, uh, depending on time of invoicing and time of letter, mm -hmm. shouldn't be. A problem mm. ideally if it's about the time and you already issued an invoice at standard rated you yes. ask for a credit note mm -hmm. and ensure that you attach that letter onto your credit note approval ah, okay application i hope that answers you anonymous such as say is a quick one in case i have different products and services which calls for different codes am i able to configure multiple codes in the system do you give me that authority to configure my profile at any time um this is not in relation to stock configuration okay. um the configuration that we are talking about is when someone is applying the first level is that they have to select the commodity code okay so the ones they want to purchase at that particular time hmm. is what they will have to indicate in their application okay but for Applying, I, I don't know if he meant if I'm if I've applied, am I allowed to apply again? Uh, they but say, maybe do you give me that authority to configure my profile at any time? I think that's to do with the changes, making changes and amendments on their end. We we are not really making the 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 adjustment yes. on the profile. Ah. It is on an application. It's okay. an application by application basis. Okay. Yes. Mm. So if that application has gone through, they can still apply okay. for any other item. Ah. Or changes. Yes. But if they applied and they see they apply, they, there's a mistake, mm -hmm. there's an option for us to return the application to you. 
Yes, I and hope that you. answers you, Sacha. Uh, Lenia says, hello, you have talked about issuing a deemed VAT invoice. Kindly elaborate how we shall issue that, say, on the IFRS portal. Do you have, do you want to demonstrate? Yes. Okay. Uh, Irene will be showing us what to do on that issue. Thank you, Lenia, for your question and all our viewers, thank you for being part of it and thank you for the questions. We are going to try as much as possible to answer each and every one of them. Keep okay. them coming. This is just a workflow that you're supposed to place in the buyer's pin and then you select whether it is deemed or VAT exemption. After you select the project, after you indicate the quantity or amount that that person is going to purchase. So if that quantity or amount was approved by URA, it will enable IFRIS mm -hmm. issuance. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if it is not the amount that was approved by URA, mm -hmm. you will get an error message which looks like this. Okay. So the error message here is it tells you that the amount the amount or quantity of the goods or services has exceeded the project's remaining value of mm -hmm. deemed VAT stroke VAT exemption and you cannot invoice. Okay. Yes. Okay. But a demo is coming and it will be available on YouTube mm -hmm. as well as the IFRIS account. Thank you, Irene. Uh, we can move on to the other questions. We are trying as much as possible to answer all of them. And if time cuts us off, we shall be able to answer them and still have videos of the answers on our social media. Even if it's text you need, we'll be able to answer them, yeah? I'm going to share these questions with Irene. Whichever, wherever time gets up, you'll be able to answer them and we shall definitely share them widely. Okay. Okay, uh, Dennis says, where does the 6% money is deducted and taken to? Because 6% withholding tax, it's clear. My worry is, is how can we access this? We're talking about VAT. Although there is the 6% VAT withheld, okay. but it does, not, it does not apply to deemed VAT sales. Okay. It only applies to standard rated sales where cash is received for the VAT. Ah, okay. Uh, Harriet says, is it a must to apply for deemed VAT when you are a contract? Because we do deemed sales invoices, but we didn't apply for deemed purchases. And what happens now that we didn't? They are going to notify us mm -hmm. about that. Yes. Avail us with the IFRIS generated invoices mm -hmm. where they have been charged VAT and uh, VAT was not, uh, was did, okay, where well, they are being card VAT, mm. they will give us that breakdown, okay. and then a letter they will get a response, okay. which will enable the suppliers to reverse. Okay, uh, someone says, Does this apply to us for deal who deal in warehouse rentals and in warehouse rentals? Does it only if you, you are supplying to someone? <laughs> Who qualifies for the provisions? Okay. Yes. Uh, some deemed projects require services like transport and consultancy, but the URA letters omit these services and include goods only. How will this be reconciled to you? Um, ideally, when you're availing the if it's commodity codes to your to your customer, yes, you have to clearly state those two codes, and it will be considered. Okay. Uh, when the project is already registered as VAT deemed, the feature always expires in IFRIS before the end of the contract. Will it be solved by the automated process? We don't expect people to purchase out of the project. <laughs> okay. Out of the project duration, you ought to purchase all your items within the project. or all, all the services have to be consumed within the project duration. Out of the duration, the items will be will be seized okay. and they deactivated. So I'm going to, I think we're going to answer three more questions. Our time is running up and the rest of the questions, Irene, I need you to promise that you'll answer them. Yes, I will. Okay, and we'll share them and probably make a video, you answering them and share them on YouTube, on our YouTube, because there are quite a number of questions. So just three more questions. Our viewers, we apologize. The time is not on our side, but 
The remaining questions will be answered by Irene and you'll get the answers shared out on our social media platforms and YouTube. Thank you so much. So the last three questions, isn't there a way of keeping those deemed companies automatically in IFRIS? Sometimes we really can't tell who is deemed and not. After making the invoice, they tell us that they are deemed or exempted, yet we have already paid for the VAT. Ideally, at point of invoicing, mm. all the projects that have been configured, mm. it will be a confirmatory test for you. When you place in that item, it will be showing the, it the icon of deemed. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, our second last question, will there be a provision on the portal to upload the necessary documents or clients will still have to submit original copies to URA offices? When it comes to point of applying, mm. for example, any construction company and they want to purchase uh, maybe consultancy services, they can. there is an option for them to upload mm. that contract for us for review. Okay. Chris says, I believe if risk codes are general in nature, do all suppliers have specific if risk codes? I think we no. answered this. No. no, they don't. There is a particular code for each and every item. A yes. pen has a code, a pencil. Mm. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much for the questions, our viewers. There are quite many. Our time is running out very terribly. But Irene, please, I'm going to share these questions with you. Make sure okay. you answer them. We'll put them on our social media platforms. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you, Irene. And please, we are going to answer the remaining questions, really. Time has not been on our side today and we hope to see you next time on Thursday, same time and same place. Or alternatively, we can have the same show, a part two, to finish the questions and it's okay. have everyone, at least their, answer, their questions answered. Thank you so much. Your parting shots, Irene. Parting shots. Your last words for our viewers. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh... Our taxpayers, we thank you so much for your contribution to 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 the to the country's goal. Um, please come on board. You're going online. Online is always better than manual. I'm excited yes. to facilitate you. We're excited to facilitate you. So come on board. Come first October. We are online. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was nice to have you. Till next time. Have a good day.